went to the mall and did a tiny bit of retail therapy. Um, I purchased two pairs of shoes because I need new workout shoes. Um, the ones that I currently have are the Ro Nike Roshi Roche Runs and I've had them for years and they don't support the parts of my feet that I need them to support because of my shin splints and you know, me being knock kneed, so I kind of needed like decent shoes that I could feel comfortable in. So, one of the shoes I got are these. I don't know if you can see them, but these are this is one of the pairs. It's called the Nike Downshifter 10. Well, they are comfortable, they're very lightweight too, which I do like because I do like to do lots of things barefoot. So for it to feel like there's nothing on my feet is a plus. And the next pair that I got are these. And these are like the definition of lightweight. Like they, they feel like nothing on my feet. These are called the Nike Epic React Flyknit 2. I'm very happy with my purchases. <laughs> kind of like solidifies my commitment to working out this summer. I started another crochet project. I'm basically almost finished. I just have to attach certain pieces. I've seen a couple pictures of this crochet bag on Pinterest and I was like, like I said last month, I was trying to get rid of all of the yarn that I had from my previous projects and these were the colors that I had. So I've attached, this is like one side of the purse, this part's the bottom and then this part's the other side. And all I have left to attach is the strap which is basically gonna go if I can like hold it up to a point where it'll look like something let's see I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that I don't think I'm that that skilled if I can I can hold it upside down so maybe you can see so this is kind of what's gonna end up looking like I don't know if I'm gonna keep this or if I'm gonna give this away and I do have to make two more bags I have to make a bag for my they're both my cousins one for my little cousin one for my older cousin I'm making the flower bag that I made Drew just in different colors for them so that'll be another project I'm working on but I also needed a break from doing this because I did kind of get slightly irritated making it just because crocheting is so repetitive and even though it's repetitive and can be meditative it can get quite boring especially when you're in the middle of it and you just can't see an end to it I'm rambling as I always do all right Hello, here's what's getting ready to happen. As you can see, my hair looks like this. I'm getting ready to do a protein treatment for my hair because I've been wanting to bleach my hair for a very long time. Like In high school I wanted platinum but I settled for honey just because I didn't want to mess up my hair too much. Then I went back darker because I missed my darker hair color 
And now I want to bleach it platinum blonde. And I've had my hair bleached three times, and I've colored it twice, and I've never done any sort of protein treatment. So before I bleach it, I'm going to do a protein treatment, and then after I bleach it, I'm going to do to do another one because I know I'm probably going to need to do it after. Yesterday, I didn't follow directions and I washed and conditioned my hair when I was only supposed to wash it <laughs> so I had to shampoo out that conditioner and deep conditioner that I had in my hair yesterday and now we're here now my hair is detangled and it's shampooed and sectioned off so I can do this treatment and I'm using the Afuji, um two-step protein treatment. I have the moisturizer. Let's let's do a protein treatment on my hair. Oh. Let it dry, because that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to just dry while it's in your hair. And on my hair and just to see like how it's going to develop my hair within 45 minutes because um, I've colored my hair before as I said so I want to see how it's going to break through the color and what color it's going to end up being once I take it out and that's going to let me know whether or not I'm double processing or maybe if I need to triple process like if that's even a thing. Definitely like re bleach. 
Yeah. The end. Now I'm just gonna, I'm letting this sit in my hair for like 20 minutes, even because even though like I know the ends have gotten bleached to like the max capacity, I want to make sure that my roots are done. So the next time that I bleach my hair, I only have to bleach the ends. And I'm very excited. I haven't told any of my friends that I'm bleaching my hair. They've all known that I wanted to bleach my hair, but I never told them that I was actually going through with it this month. So we'll see how. I know it's not going to be perfect like the first time. I also do not have toner either because I didn't know what level my hair was going to bleach to. So I'm going to wait to see what level my hair is going to bleach to and then I'm going to buy the toner for it. I don't know if I showed you what my hair looks like, but this is basically what the color is at right now. Um, as you can probably see, the end is where like the box dye was from when I dyed my hair brown and then black and then this is all virgin hair up here um there's like a couple of missed spots in terms of bleach where my mother missed when she was doing my roots but that's neither here nor there and my hair currently looks like this because i have a protein treatment in my curls at the ends like past like past where the virgin hair stopped it was really loose and I knew I was going to end up bleaching my hair sometime next week and I didn't think that if I didn't do a protein treatment, if like it would have been okay to bleach again. So I just decided to put a protein treatment in now and now I'm getting ready to rinse it out and put a deep conditioner in and then possibly just braid my hair up um, until I decide to bleach it again. There's a color in the, I don't know if you can see in the back of my head, it's like down here. It's like basically white, and that's kind of the color that I'm going for. Um, we'll see if I can get my hair in that color, um, either through just bleaching or if I have to put a toner on it to get it that color. But that's a little update as to what's going on in terms of my bleached hair. first ugh, bleached my hair and as you can see I have the toner in. I'm using Salon Care's 10 volume developer and I'm also using Wella's T14, T11, and 050 and after I tone it I'm going to do a protein treatment because my hair is truly asking for it. My ends are practically like begging to be taken care of. Hello! So I think the last time that I like sat down and like spoke to the camera was when I was toning my hair. So a little update on that. Um, as you can see, my hair is now a kind of decent color or colors. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail about why, but let's just say I should have did a color remover before I bleached my hair. But that's in the past, I, I've come to terms with the color of my hair. Now the health of my hair is a different story. I'm going to insert pictures of what my hair looked like once I finished bleaching and toning. Um, as you can probably see in the pictures, I did overtone my hair. The toner packaging said to keep the toner in for 30 minutes, 
me being me, I kept it in for 45 because I just wanted to make sure that I got the color that I wanted and because I left it in for so long, my some of my hair took the pigment of the toner instead of just canceling out the colors I wanted it to cancel out. So that's kind of what my hair looked like and as you can probably see on the ends of my hair, they're practically straight and the roots of my hair are like a little curly but the ends were completely jacked up. They were limp, they were loose, they were lifeless, all three L's. And they don't look like that now. I've done some protein treatments. I've done some deep conditioning treatments. It's still not where it was before I bleached my hair, but I kind of knew going in that my hair, my hair's health was not going to be the greatest once I finished. I knew I was going to have to go through a process of rehabilitating my hair back to a decent state in terms of my health. And I was fully prepared to do that, um, well aware of what I had to do before I did it. So I'm not that upset about it, nor am I that surprised. But if anybody wants to, if anybody wants to know, that's what happened. But that's it about my hair. I wanted to do a little bit of a book chat or kind of just showing you what I've read and how I felt about what I read. The first book that I wanted to talk about is The Song of Achilles. Um, this is written by Madeline Miller and essentially this is a retelling of the Iliad. People call it a fan fiction of the Iliad. Um, it's a retelling of the Achilles and Patroclus love story. This is set in the heroic age um, around the time of the Trojan War. The story is told in Patroclus's perspective and it basically follows him through his experience befriending Achilles and basically becoming Achilles' lover and adventures and experiences throughout the time frame that where the Iliad takes place. I've never read the Iliad. I don't think I will ever read the Iliad. But I'm a little sucker for romance and for whatever reason I'm so much more of a sucker for gay love stories. So I really enjoyed this book. Almost all of my favorite books are gay love stories of men on men and The Song of Achilles is also a male on male love story. So I don't know what that says about me, but on to the next book. The next three books I'm going to talk about are all books that have been recommended by Say It With Me. Harry Styles. Yeah, I was a little bit nervous about reading some of his recommendations because I read Norwegian Wood and while I do understand why people like the book so much um, because of the way that Mirakami writes, it's very lucid and dreamlike and so tangible and real at the same time. I wasn't the biggest fan of the book, but I'm I did enjoy these three. So the first one I'm gonna, or the second book I want to talk about is called *The Course of Love* by Elaine de Botton. I hope I'm saying his name right. This book follows the two main characters, Robbie and Kirsten, through the flowering of their relationship and beyond. I don't know about other people, but I know for me in the literature and art that I read that. Is a that has a romantic trope in it. I kind of only see the very beginning of the relationship. Um, and what I mean by that is the part where they're not in a relationship or in that a kind of romantic relationship to the journey to getting them to that kind of romantic relationship. And then after that, like the relationship is kind of in itself the climax and you don't really see like a falling action after it. I really like this because for, for someone who has such an affinity with romance and art that revolves around romance and love, it was really refreshing to see someone have a take on what happens beyond the honeymoon stage. And this book also kind of doesn't follow the traditional self-help book layout. Instead of the book unloading a bunch of information at you at once, giving certain examples to support it, and then constantly repeating itself over and over again. It has a plot line. In the story, you'll get these little italicized excerpts of 
why certain things occurred and how you could possibly interpret the little excerpt and solve whatever problem is occurring I usually find that I learn a lot more about life through fiction novels which maybe contributes to my unrealistic expectations of life that's kind of like my perfect happy medium of like self-help but also fiction the next book is kind of really big right now for Harry Styles because he's currently filming the movie for it and it is My Policeman by Bethann Roberts. I originally wasn't going to get this book for the pure fact that I didn't want to read about a love story of a white policeman because black people and police don't get along and I was just not, I was just not here for it. I'm very happy that I got this book because it is a good story. The story follows Tom, who is the main love interest, who is also the policeman, Marion, which is his wife, and Patrick, which is his other lover with he was having an affair with, but not necessarily an affair. It's set in 19, in 1950s Brighton, where it's safer to marry Marion, for Tom to marry Marion, than it is for Tom to be in a relationship with Patrick and it just follows them through the beginning of Marion and Tom's relationship and the beginning of Tom and Patrick's relationship and how one of them essentially ruins the relationship for all of them and ruins their lives, kind of. I found myself longing to read Patrick's side more and I don't know if that's also just because of my affinity with, for whatever reason, male on male relationships in literature. If you have any recommendations for like woman on woman or like a non-binary relationship like please let me know because I just keep finding male on male gay romance literature. I'd pick it up again. I would pick it up again. I did enjoy my policeman. The next book, one of the reasons why I bought it was because I went on Amazon and I went to the used book section and it was like close to one dollar. This book is called Love is a Mixtape by Rob Sheffield. I didn't know who Rob Sheffield was before I read this book and I still kind of don't know who he is. Um, he's apparently a writer for the Rolling Stones. I don't remember what section he is but I would definitely read this book again. I guess you could say this book is kind of a autobiography. Is that one the one where you write it yourself? I think autobiography of his life and um, how music is kind of in itself a time capsule for moments and memories that you have with people. And the main topic, I guess, of the book is his the death of his wife and how that affected him and how the music around him affected him around there. It's honestly so funny i found myself taking pictures of certain excerpts taking pictures of certain titles of certain sections in the book sending them to my friends showing them to my mother because they were just so funny and it even got to the point where one of my friends showed her dad and her dad now wants to read the book it's it's a short read even though it took me a minute to get through it gets straight to the point to things it, it doesn't overly describe certain things you kind of get the gist of what's going on and how he's feeling in the moment when it gets to the point of his wife's death especially for someone who had just been dealing with a death of a loved one on their own it gives you the tug of the emotion of what he was feeling at the moment but it didn't spiral me into a depressive state out of a relatability of grief and it also kind of moves pretty fast and for someone who enjoys a slow burn that's surprising that I enjoyed the fast pace of that and the last book that I want to talk about that I have finished reading already and also now one of my favorite books and also a gay love story is called Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe by Benjamin Alir Sainz. I hope I didn't pronounce his name wrong. This book, once I picked it up, I couldn't put it back down. I started reading this book at 10 a.m. two days ago and finished it 
at 4 p.m. the same day. And like, I think the only time I took a break reading this book was to eat. It follows Dante and Ari, which is short for Aristotle, um, basically through like the flourishing of their friendship and their relationship with each other and how that influences their sense of self, their sexual orientation and identity, and obviously a bit of love and romance. And you also get to see like a bit of the relationships that they have with their parents and their family and how that influences the relationship that they have with themselves. And it was, I think I liked it so much because for me it was so relatable in the sense of like the relationship that Ari has with his family growing up. I just love this book so much. After I finished reading it, I was literally thinking about how I'm going to reread the book again. Uh -huh. It's so beautiful. This, and it kind of reminds me of a, of a happier version of On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. It's not, it's not completely happy, but it's not as depressive as On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. And this also, this book also tackles the sense of self in terms of your ethnic identity because both of the main characters are Mexican. I'm a little jealous of my little cousin because he gets to read this book for a summer assignment for um, school for his next year and had I got an opportunity to read this for an assignment I know I would have enjoyed so much going into a literary analysis of this book. But those are all the books that I've read recently. i say I had a pretty good time reading all of them. None of them felt like I was dragging myself to read it or forcing myself to read it. Yeah, Harry Styles has some good book recommendations and so did Tumblr. These are, for me at least, and I won't say, I don't think my taste is extremely niche. I thoroughly enjoyed reading all of these. Every last book in my little pile right here, I think I would reread. That is all I have to say about that. <laughs>